Welcome and thank you for joining us for our lecture on phylum Annelida. This word Annelida, the roots of it mean little rings. And if you look at these creatures when they're out and about like an earthworm, you can see that their bodies do in fact have little rings on them. Um, we more commonly know them as our segmented worms, like earthworms and some fireworms. And we have about 9,000 species of annelids. So basic body parts. Their symmetry is bilateral. You can see this in an earthworm if you were to cut it down the center. However, you can also see it on something like this fireworm where you can make that cut directly from above to get two mirror image halves. Its skeleton is hydrostatic. If you've seen a worm crawling, you can tell how much it is able to bend its body. Um, it actually has muscles that go around its body like this, that when they contract, they squeeze the um, fluid-filled compartments in the worm's body, making the worm um, long and skinny. And then it also has muscles that run like this along its body, which when those contract, make the worm short and fat. Its digestive system, we've got a separate mouth and anus, which means we have a complete digestive system. For its circulatory system, its circulatory system is closed, meaning that the blood stays in vessels. You can see that our worm has a dorsal vessel and a ventral vessel, as well as vessels going around the sides in each segment. Okay. For its nervous system, it has a simple brain, and its nerve cord is located on the ventral surface of our body. This is opposite to ours. Ours is on our dorsal surface. All right, segmentation. These annelids are segmented. Um, they have repeating sections. For example, an earthworm actually has five hearts. And they are those larger vessels right here that do the majority of the pumping for blood throughout the body, um, whereas the other ones are more just kind of carrying it between the two vessels. The segments in an annelid are divided by something called septa, which are kind of like a thick membrane. This is different from a human. Humans do not have these membranes or septa inside their bodies. If they did, our whole chest cavity would be filled with membranes between each of our ribs and each of our vertebrae. And for our annelids, the segments are typically visible on the outside or externally. All right, another thing with these segments is that each segment has paired hairs which are called kiti or siti and I know those words don't look and sound the way that they sound so we'll write underneath that these are pronounced kiti and siti we don't usually think of worms being hairy, so what do our annelids use these hairs for? One of the things they use it for is movement. So if you think about it, an earthworm trying to crawl through the soil needs some way to get traction, and so it has these hairs on the sides of its body to help it get traction. Um, some marine annelids actually have these hairs fused into paddles, which they then use for swimming. Annelids can also use their hairs for sensing the world around them. They can use them for respiration in some marine organisms. They are fused together to make gills that they can breathe with. And then the last one is for defense. Okay, if you think about eating a yummy piece of pizza and then think about eating a hairy piece of pizza, no one wants to eat the hairy one. Those hairs are there on many of the annelids to protect them from being eaten. One thing that we as humans use these kiti for is for classification. 
So annelid classification is based on the number of hairs per segment. So let's take a look at that classification. All right, our first group is our class polychaeta. And in this word polychaeta, poly means many. Keta means hairs. So these guys have many hairs. They are defined as having more than two pairs of hairs per segment. Okay. These kiti or CT may be fused to make either paddles, and those are for the mobile worms, like these fire worms right here, or they may be fused into gills. These ones are for the sessile worms. So there are some worms that are sessile. Examples are these Christmas tree worms, which drill holes down into the coral and then stick their um, gills out in order to get um, food and water from the air. Others can sometimes be sessile and kind of retract back into tubes like this one. Another class is class Clitellata, and within that we will look at subclass Hirudinia, which is our leeches. These guys have no hairs per segment. And most of us know that leeches are parasitic and suck blood. However, they are also used in medicine because they produce something called an anticoagulant, um, which is a chemical that prevents blood clotting. So if you think about it, a leech doesn't want your blood to clot because then its food supply would get blocked up. Um, so we use this anticoagulant that they produce in medicine as a way to promote wound healing um, and uh, other typically surgical functions. Our last group then of annelids is going to be our subclass oligochaeta. So we know by now that chaeta means hairs. Oligo, like an oligarchy, means few. So these guys have few hairs per segment. We would define them as having one pair of hairs per segment. And these include our earthworms, like the ones below. So a few reasons that earthworms are important for the environment. One, they are decomposers. Two, they can help fertilize the soil. And there are actually people who will farm worms specifically to get their waste, called castings, as fertilizer. And then lastly, they can also help aerate the soil. As they tunnel through it, they create holes, which then allows more water and more air into the soil, better for plant roots and for other organisms that live there. So we would put our annelids on our cladogram right here. All right, that is it for annelids. Go ahead and watch the giant earthworm video on our Verge page and complete the annelid virtual learning assignment if you were given that assignment.